I ever was before. Because I know who he really is. And I know he really is coming back. There is no doubt in my mind. And since I was a small boy, and I heard in the book of Revelations, Jesus will come back. I said, I wish I would be with those people who see him when he comes back. And there's no doubt in my mind because our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, Muhammad, alayhi salam, he said it clear. Jesus, peace be upon him, did not die. It's in the Quran as well. Did not die, but rather Allah pulled him up. He's with Allah. Something else was made apparent to them. You know when we were in Mumbai and you fixed that one for us. Remember that? It wasn't somebody else on the cross. It doesn't say that. It just says something was made apparent and they've been arguing about it ever since. Ah. But what we do know, Allah is merciful and he answered the prayers of Jesus. And Jesus asked him, let this pass from me. So Allah lifted him up, brought him up. Not in the sense like elevator or something. I don't know. Who cares? What we're talking about in the last day, how will he come back? Angels will be with him and he'll come back. Not only will he believe it, we know where. Will he come to Mecca? No. He's going to go to Blood Hashem. Better food. I like the food of Blood Hashem. It's very nice. Surya. Yeah. But by the way, I eat food too. I know he's Egyptian, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, when Jesus Salam, comes back, he will be coming back to Syria, Surya. And when he comes back, it will be a time of great turmoil. We know this because he will be leading the believers against great battles that are going on. Do you think that's possible these days? Could it be that in a Muslim country there could be battles and fighting? That's possible. <coughs> yeah. Anyhow, when he comes, look what's going to happen. It's going to be time for which salah? Morning salah, right? Fajr? And when he comes, they're going to say, Oh, lead the salah for us. Lead the prayer for us. He'll say, Nope. I'm not coming with anything new. You know, I'm just going to pray behind your imam. Pray. See how beautiful? And then he will lead the believers against bad opposition. But they will win. They'll be very successful. And at that time, that will be the appearance of the one-eyed false god called in Arabic Messiah Dijal or the false Christ. You see? Remember Messiah? We didn't talk about Messiah. We need to talk about that. Christ comes from Messiah. Messiah. We mentioned that part, but what does Messiah mean? Do you know? Messiah means wipe. You know? Which are wipers? Wipe. Yeah, wipe. Wipe. Because, you know, this is real. This is Messiah. It is what Muslims make when we have, uh, uh, want to wipe over the top of our socks. And when we make wudu, we wipe them. Mess. Is it? Yeah. And the lady, she can just go over the top of her hijab. Hmm? Or the imam, he can go over the top of his imama. Or, I don't know. <laughs> but the point we're trying to get is, this word is a simple word. And it comes from Hebrew. It's not just Arabic. Hebrew and Arabic are almost alike in many places. And the custom was that when they anointed a king for the Jewish tribe, they would bring him in front of all the people and they would bring as a tomb. This is the olive, the oil from the olive. And they would take this olive oil and they would anoint his head and they would say, this is our king. We accept him as our king. And when they would do this, this is called what? And the one is having it done to him, Messiah. He was the Messiah. So they had all of their kings were messiahs. The special one here is anointed by Allah to be the king, the king of the Jews. And that's what he was, and that's what he will be when he returns, and he will be 
leading all the believers. There will be Jews who will recognize him. Good news. Christians also will recognize him. And Muslims too will recognize him. And they will follow him. And the one who is the one-eyed devil, or the Dijal, or they call him also the um, Masih, a Dijal. That's another name for him. He's mentioned in the Bible too. He's going to die. And how? It's strange. It's mentioned in the Hadith that he will dissolve from Jesus coming back. It's amazing. You should read the stories about this. And when he comes back, after this takes place, there's going to be such peace. It's going to be almost like, like paradise on earth. Not really, but nice. It's going to be peace, calm, people following him will have it easy. And you heard the expression maybe from the Christian talking about when the lamb lays down with the lion because it will be so peaceful that there won't be these kinds of uh, violence and things. Now that's something all of us should look forward to. Wouldn't it be lovely? And this is the teaching in Islam. And then finally, 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 Jesus and all of his followers, there will be a vapor that comes across and they'll fall asleep and then they'll die. Now some have offered that this is some kind of a time when they'll be like picked up by a flying saucer or something and go floating away and they won't really die and that, but everybody will die. And this is a good way for us to end the program tonight is to mention about this. Allah said in the Quran, Every single soul will taste death. Brothers, sisters, we're going to die. All of us were born, but nobody chose to be born on a certain day, a certain time, a certain place. We had nothing to do with it. Our mother knows more about that than we do. And she knows a lot about it. But we really do have one thing to be responsible for. How do we die? The message that came with Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, Suleiman, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them all, was a beautiful and simple message. La ilaha illallah. There's none to worship except the law. And Allah sums it up in a very lovely way in chapter 3, verse 102, Surah Adam 1, when he says, Ya al-Madina aminu attaqallah haqatu katahi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimu. O oh, you who are the believers, who have come to faith, have taqwa for Allah. Respect, fear of Allah. It's His right. And don't die except in a state of full surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace to Him. I had to translate the word aslama to be in this state with Him. So, we see that Jesus fulfilled really all of the scripture. He fulfilled the Old Testament as coming and leading to victory. He came, then he went on a hiatus, they call it when he left, but he's coming back. And when he comes back, he will have that victory. He predicted one would come after him, and he came, that was Muhammad. So we find that this is exactly right. And the New Testament, obviously, if you read John chapters 14, 16, you find that surely he's saying something. I have to leave so that the comforter, they translated Paracletos from the Koine Greek to English as comforter, some places counselor, some places as different things. But the main thing was he said somebody's coming after me. And he came. The spirit of truth, the comforter, the counselor, the advocate, and Muhammad wasalam, was all of this and much more as well. We know without doubt he was speaking about Muhammad Sallallahu In any case, for us as Muslims, we're saying congratulations to the Jews. What you thought is going to happen, no problem. Your Messiah will come. He's already been here, you didn't recognize him the first time, but I hope you've recognized him the second time. For the Christians, we say to you, congratulations as well. 
because your book still has, even though you lost the original, you still have some truth in it. And we can verify it for you as well. And for the Muslims, I hope and pray that you'll stay awake because this is a very important subject. When Jesus returns, we have to be on that state of a taqwa. We must be in this state of a taqwa when he comes back. So for all of those who follow the monotheistic faith, congratulations. This is the greatest thing. Believe in one God and follow your messenger and believe, believe in Jesus. Peace and blessing be upon him is coming and returning back. That's my prayer for all of us. Amen. Someone would like to come up and accept Islam. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. MashaAllah. Good news. I remember when I made Shahada. I cried. And every time I give Shahada to people, I cry. I love giving Shahada. Come on up. No, no, come with him. Come with him. Come on. First of all, tell everybody your name. Uh, Jojo. Okay, and where are you from? Uh, from Philippines. The Philippines. Yes. What's your city? Uh, Alba, Alba. There's no city. It's only a province, you know. So you're a country boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Okay. Now, do you know about Allah? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one. He's right? the only one. He's the only one that. Okay. You know about Muhammad? Um, Muhammad uh, is a prophet, last <laughs> prophet. Yeah. I think he's the last prophet. Well, Muhammad's the last prophet. He's is coming back to finish the job. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you meant? <laughs> After you heard our program, then I'm sure it confused you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. Don't yeah, worry that's about it. That's why. Yeah. yeah, I heard the program. And that's why I know. Do you want to be a Muslim? Yeah, yeah. Do you okay. know how to make bombs? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> You know, a lot of people, they will say a lot of things about you because you accepted Islam. But who cares? I only want to know what Allah is going to say about me on the Day of Judgment. If my Lord accepts me, that's all I care. I accepted Islam just like you 17 years ago. But when you accept Islam, you become just like when you came from your mother, brand new. Brand new. No sins, no scratches, no dents, no mileage, good shape. MashaAllah. <laughs> MashaAllah. And, yeah, I have a little bit of fun. So, the other thing is, you get to keep all your good deeds. And no bad deeds. Allah wipes it clean. And a person starts over completely like a brand new person. Oh, and there's something else. You get a special connection with your Lord and you can pray and ask him for anything and he will answer your prayers. Isn't that good? Yeah. That, okay, good. now what we do, a formal, you already believe it, so inshallah in your heart you're already a Muslim, don't worry. Yeah. But what we do is a formal introduction for you and for all of your brothers and sisters, we're just going to say it out loud. And is English okay? Is it okay. And then we'll do Arabic, okay? okay. So we'll say English. And if, you, if any part of what I say you don't agree with, you stop me. But if you agree, then you say it. Okay? okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> you know, we are experts in this. We are highly trained in this. I'm going to be watching you. I'm just going to say the Arabic. Uh, well, okay, that's good. Because I know the English. Yeah. You know the Arabic. <laughs> Let's start with the Arabic. No, time. English first. No, Arabic is first, okay? He doesn't know, do you know Arabic? No, oh, but no, not yet. So it has to be a language he knows. <laughs> right or wrong? No, he has to know what he's getting into. No, what is he yeah? Hello. Where's your proof? By, by Filipino. Okay. okay. <laughs> he's a troublemaker. Now we go, now we go about this place. Uh-huh. No, this is sweet. Okay, you ready? Ready. <laughs> I swear. I swear. There's no God to worship. There's no God to worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I swear. And I swear. Muhammad. Muhammad. Is his messenger. 
ISIS Messenger. Allahu Akbar.